Let the dragon consume you! Ha 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 Back at it one more time. Here's your host, Ryan and Clay. That about to bring you some sweet, sweet Overwatch action. All right, we are back. Episode eight, stage three, week one. And boy, Ryan, I have missed your sweet, sweet voice. <laughs> <laughs> I missed your voice too, man. It yeah. sucked. It was like you know, it was good to have a little break because these games can be a lot so much so far, and like you know, week to week. But oh yeah, yeah one week I was like, man, I kind of want to talk about Overwatch. Oh yeah, doesn't feel like homework, man, when you're getting to watch watch games and write stuff down about it. But yeah, you yeah. got to put a lot into it to get a lot out of it, right? Yeah, you got to focus, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try. I even tried to you know actively not text you about things. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna yeah. rest. We'll, well, we'll get this all out. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> funny. I, I, everybody around me knows I love Overwatch, and they're a little bit more casual compared to me and you. Yeah. Uh, and they'll talk to me about these things. I'm like, man, I wish you were Ryan right now because you have <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. I don't want to, I, I don't care if you main Bastion. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it was a, a good way to start off stage three stage three is it it's weird because i'm looking forward to next year does that make sense because i'm surprised on how well this year has gone and not to get into too much news but even the ceo of uh valiant he did a ask me anything on reddit not too long ago and one of the things he mentioned is you know for all of the owners and the organization they're surprised by how much of a head start this thing has taken off um and just how it's constantly growing like that that was the goal but it's destroying expectations oh absolutely yeah because i w- i was thinking you know maybe halfway through the season we'd get 40 to fifty thousand viewers per yeah per game yeah. we're getting 120 130 a lot of <laughs> these games. yeah really cool and then uh, when you see pictures of of uh these groups and uh these colleges doing big uh, get-togethers, man, dude, there was a bar in Boston, man. It was jam-packed oh, full of people. that's dope. Yeah, it was cool. Everybody uh, everybody in there, dude, just chanting, man. It was, uh, it was a real hype experience, I'm sure. That's what's up. Wait, yeah. Wait, let's, let's get into it, man. Another, yeah, absolutely. You know, we're going to keep saying it. Another good week. I wouldn't say it was great yeah. compared to what we have. It definitely it started good. great, uh, kind of tapered off at the end. Yeah. But, yeah, man, it, it was cool getting back into things, especially after some awesome playoffs. It's showing we have uh, some predictive skills because we are getting closer to a lot of these games are three two, like these yeah, three two yeah, ga- games. Absolutely, that that shows the kind of the leveling out of the curve on the the ladder. Yeah. Um, but all right, so we're gonna we're gonna hop into it. Uh, you guys remember our format? In case you don't, we do honorable mentions for the day to day, and then we follow with our feature match, which is chosen based on what we think is going to be the hot one. Uh, for that week we can't do all the matches we don't get paid for this (laughs) and we have you know families so that's the thing but okay wednesday we're gonna give you the feature match for this week is los angeles gladiators versus san francisco shock that's a mouthful but our honorable (laughs) mentions are uh we had the shanghai dragons versus dallas fuel um to start off the week uh which definitely was something people were looking forward to because a lot of their players um, are now in the states. Yeah, yeah, we got Kikari, Sky, and Adu uh, playing in their first match. So pretty cool. Yeah. And Dallas Shield, the new coach. Yeah. Oh, new coach as well. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's exciting. Unfortunately, you know, it like anybody else, it takes time for that yeah. turnaround. Right. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a building experience for yeah. sure. We saw it with the San Francisco Shock, um, as we'll see here when Sinatra and Super came on, that they didn't instantly start winning. They started doing better, but it yep. took time. Yep. Yep. Um, there's no there's no magic uh, involved. But, yeah, so we had Dallas Field take that one, 3-1. Um, the next honorable mentions is Los Angeles Valiant versus Soul Dynasty. And this was a shocker um, yeah. to everyone. Um, yeah. 
One big reason being that Los Angeles Valiant have been going through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had some, some change-ups in the roster and definitely some, some I'm sure, some behind-the-stage motivations. Like, hey, guys, you're obviously a very good team. I, we, we know you have the talent. Let's, uh, let's see it. Yeah. So. And, and definitely, uh, listeners out there, uh, like I said, their CEO did a Ask Me Anything. And there's some really good questions on there. The moderators had to, handled it really well on the competitive Overwatch uh, Reddit. Yeah. And so check that out and read through it. He answers a lot of questions and he's, you know, it's respectable. I get it from a business owner standpoint. Um, but yeah, so Valiant here took, took it 4 0 against Soul Dynasty. Soul Dynasty has been having problems, but also they use the B squad here, which a lot of people kind of questioned as far as what their goal is. Um, some are saying that it's to essentially balance out the playtime uh, because on the overall scale is what they're looking at. They're not looking at it week to um they're not looking at it stage to stage anymore. They're looking at the grand scheme and yeah. they're still up there. So I think they're trying to balance out or a lot of people think they're trying to balance out uh their their roster to get ready for the end of the season type stuff. Oh, I I thought it was like you know like you're playing basketball as a kid, everybody mm-hmm. has to play. You know I mean? <laughs> oh no! Nah, maybe on. I was I was confused <laughs> with the, with everything that's been going on in the league. Which people who <laughs> haven't touched any stage yeah. time, they don't care about that. There's <laughs> no, money involved. No. Oh yeah, he's got to play, man. He hadn't played this season, so yeah, yeah. Nah. cool. Uh, uh, so yeah, you you oh, were yeah. saying a future match? Yeah, future match. Los Angeles Gladiators versus San Francisco Shock. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah, it was it was a solid one, um, and it was definitely a a battle. So let's get into it. We have first of all, we have. You know, two teams that Los Angeles Gladiators kind of, we saw them turn it around. Um, San Francisco Shock now has Super on top of Sinatra. Yep, turned 18, uh, ready yeah. to go. Yeah, so they got that, that Winston Tank, Super known for being an uh, aggressive Winston Tank. Yeah, and vocal um, as well, too. Yeah, and not no shots at Nomi because, you know, I've talked about in our past episodes that I liked Nomi's progression. and He's getting better. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you immediately see the difference when Super comes in. Yeah. Um, oh, and, yeah. And, and you can talk to this when uh, when it comes to dive comp. You know, a lot of people know Winston leads to dive comp. Yeah. Uh, you have to follow his suit, and then, you know, it's him, Diva, and then everybody else. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you definitely want one of those guys out there that is, and especially like Super, is very vocal and is is telling where he needs to go and stuff like that. He he is the, the leader, the front runner, man. So yeah. you can tell. So that being said, we get into Volskaya, our first map, and Volskaya is definitely a map where you have the most Winston Diva play. I think it's like ninety nine percent. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's uh, like Lysol, right? It kills ninety nine point nine percent of all turns. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, all yeah, the fun so, too. Yeah. So having Super <laughs> here, we immediately see that their first dive is successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, they waste they waste no time getting in there and uh, picking off the Zenyatta. And the other healer, and then taking point one very easily, uh, which is something that we see both teams do. Uh, because remember, LAG does have Fisher, who do you think? I mean, my personal opinion, he's the best Winston in the league at the, at the moment. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, same boat. I think a lot of people are kind of figuring out his play style now, but yeah, it's still up there as far as one of the. I will put Mano up there as well, but yeah, yeah he's yeah. very good. But one thing to mention is. Um, also, Silk Thread. So part of the Los Angeles Valiant shenanigans was this big juggle of people. And we'll yeah. get into the trades um, because we are in a new stage at the end here with no uh, news. But, yeah, so they have Silk Threads actually starting um, in this in this match instead of Sure 4 or Hydration. I, I don't think we see Hydration at all today. No, I don't think we do at all. Yeah, uh, But, yeah, but Silk Thread's in there and immediately, you know, it's kind of lackluster, which is fine. You know, he just came to the team, first time on stage as a gladiator. I get it. Um, but his Genji was not impressive. Yeah, it got some stuff to work out. And, and like you said, he's a he's a new guy to the team. you got to kind of figure out where you're supposed to be and, and the play style of the team. So it'll take a couple weeks, I'm sure, to get kind of get that thing figured out. Yeah, it'll, t- it'll take a little bit. But yeah, he comes in. the The one part is that we do have Sinatra, and like I've mentioned, Sinatra, we know how good he can be. But him just coming in, you know, not too long ago, every match on the stage, he looks better. Like, oh yeah, dude. He's just it, constantly leveling up. 
Yeah, it's that confidence building up, man. Because obviously, you coming into it, you're you're not sure where you stand up against these guys that are professionals. And man, he is definitely is showing up to these games. And you can see it in the camera. Oh, not to mention. Okay, so <laughs> Blizzard and Twitch have released the new All Access Pass, right? Oh, um, did you buy it? Long ago. Yeah, I did. Uh, Those you know, skins trying look to support good. The- <laughs> it does. It does. I like the yeah. angles. I like the different. I get to see yeah. the team. I yeah. like the constant moving team stats, the constant yeah. yep. updating team stats. It's it's smart, and it was discounted for people who were already Twitch members. Yep. Um, so, yeah, props to them for that. But that being said, on camera, you can see him compared to that first day where he's more calm. He's having fun. He's laughing. He's having a good time. And you see that in his play because it loosens him up, right? Yeah. That's just with anybody. Um, but, yeah, all that being said, this one's kind of a back and forth. Like I said, it looks kind of even. The part that puts um, Los Angeles Gladiators over uh, the top and they end up taking this map is that Asher frags out on Widow. Um, yeah, Asher known for his tracer, but his Widow's nothing to sneeze at, and he shows it here. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely left out and contested a lot of the map too, where yeah. he is able to just get those shots. And yeah, like you said, man, he just he kills it. Yeah, crushes it. So, like I said, Los Angeles Gladiators take the first map. We move into Numbani, um, where you know San Francisco steps up to the plate. Right? They're like, uh, hey, this- we're better now. Uh, yeah. This game. Oh, it was insane. So especially good. for the yeah, especially this really did look like a really coordinated dive, especially from the shock man. Yeah. Because once they started rolling, man, it was like uh, dude, you couldn't stop them. Yeah. Uh so we have Sure for sub in for Silk Thread, right? So Silk Thread got his shot. Yep. Sure for the hair is back. Um always looking good. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh yeah. Dante Sombra. So something that we're gonna see a lot. Oh, by the way, we're on a new patch. Um, we're on the Sombra patch, correct? Yep, yep. We've got the updated Sombra where she doesn't get as much ultimate charge off or any ultimate charge off her health packs, uh, gaining health. Um, she's got the lower spread rate. She's got a quicker hack. Um, and, yeah, man, she's definitely more dominant as a DPS. And Dante shows it, dude. So yeah, disruptive. He's, so, he's so disruptive. disruptive. Um, yeah. And, you you know, that I'm, I like the Tracer-Sombra combo. And we'll get into a little bit more what later. A sense. Where a lot of people are mixing Moira into that mix as well. For yep, that, absolutely. That three, that three boy. Because it's, it's oppressive as far as how much sticky damage you have uh, and the the maneuverability, the, the ability to uh, move very easily and coordinate off those three. It's just, it's, it's, it's annoying. But, anyways, so this one is really more in the favor of San Francisco Shock. Uh, and it's more towards the end. So I, I have a point here that I have to hit in my notes where it's round 1.3, right, on defense. So Sinatra just gets this insane 5K, right? And it's the second to a last attempt. It should have been the last attempt, um, but Los Angeles pretty much squeaks, squeaks it out. Uh, but here's my play-by-play. So essentially he comes in. He kills Winston, right? He DMX Diva. Do you remember this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He DMX Diva. He kills Baby Diva. Then he flashes past the fight to the back line, pulse bombs, somber and mercy, and then tracks down Zenyatta and kills Zenyatta. Oh, yeah. It's insane. I think this is at the point where they they push uh, Surefour to go to McCree, and it feels yes. so bad when you are... One McCree, you're trying to battle that against not only a Tracer, but a Sombra. It kind of feels like a last-ditch effort, and it was a last-ditch effort. Obviously, they're at point three, they're yeah. about to cap it, and they got like four minutes left in the round. It feels terrible. You're all weights on your shoulder. And Surefour does do a good job uh, getting some picks on Dante and Sinatra at one point, but, man, it's just not enough. Yeah. It, you just feel like everything is on you. And I'm happy Tough. you brought that up because um – that's one thing we're seeing now is McCree's coming back into the meta as a solution because McCree's a great pick for the somber tracer. Yeah. Excuse me. I got a burp. The somber tracer uh, combo because he has the stun, and then if he does get hacked, those bullets still do the same amount of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So as long as you're hitting shots, which we'll see later in the week, um, I'm not going to mention the name of somebody who just frags out uh, on, on McCree. 
But anyways, follow that fight, why this one's so important. So you have that fight, LAG kind of get it back together for one final push. And then there's that final fight um, for point three uh, in overtime, which is just nuts. And I just want to point out again, Uber's that dude. Uh, Go back and watch it. The commentary on that, he goes for like a minute 30 straight. Yeah, of just like calling out what's going on and he's hype and the crowd's going nuts and it's a it's a great sports moment because that's what sports is about it's it's kind of like it's that energy it's something that you know we could all go play overwatch in our in our dungeon in the dark yeah uh, listen to music but when you have an event like this and you have this level of play and this level of intrigue and excitement those are the moments you want and they're that they're going to use that that clip for highlights for times to come oh absolutely yeah, he is so full of energy, and he can speak a mile a minute, man. It's, it's insane how it, fast he can keep up with the game. I could, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being. People are like, "Oh, you know, you have a voice for commentary and stuff like that." But doing that, that's yeah. just a whole no, another level of just yeah. Creativity. Can I watch the match three or four times first? <laughs> exactly, and then, and then we'll let record you know, it. Yeah, I have my notes right here. Like if they, yeah. if they let me take notes. <laughs> yeah, old Maybe. man Ryan's out there taking notes. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't couldn't do it, man. Very impressive, very impressive. Um, but yeah, so San Francisco shot, you know, they put their foot in it and uh, they take it. So we hop to Ilios, so we get our control map. And here is where you see it just turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, San Francisco turns the corner here. It's This is where we get the Moira piece of the combo where Sleepy and, you know, Sleepy, <laughs> Sleepy becoming more of the, you know, more in the talks as far as supports because uh, he's more quiet. Uh, yeah, but I think he got player of the match on this one too. Just yeah, yeah, fragger. His, his Moira, like he's great at finishing kills. Yeah. So as a support player, you know, I try to stay up on what's going on, best way to play characters, so on and so forth. I've been working on my Moira. You know, I'm kind of in that 60 percentile now, which I'm I'm pretty hype about. Absolutely. But one thing I learned was, you know, knowing how to finish kills correctly. So. The key to Moira is not really participating 100% in the damage portion, but knowing when to find those people to finish yeah, um, and yeah. using your orb and stuff like that. Uh, so seeing him do it, like it, the kill feed was just sleepy pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Did you have any stats on that? I think he... Uh, yeah, well, he went 31 and 25 overall, just over his four matches. Um, but yeah, he went, he got eight kills per 10 minutes and only right. died two times per 10 minutes. Which That's is, ridiculous. Kind of insane. Yeah, I wish I would. I, I wish I would have found the damage output he was doing because yeah. he was doing a ton of damage as and well. He, he didn't really. I, I think he didn't play her the first game either. So no, he was started out as uh, Zenyatta, yeah. and then I think he noticed that they were on top of him a little bit more. They kind of pinpointed him, and more is just a great character to kind of get away from things. Yeah, but yeah, so San Francisco pretty much dominated with a uh, Tracer Sombra and Moira. Uh, yeah. it's a pretty short one. It was funny when I queued up the video. I was like, oh. It's not that long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> eight, eight minutes. Is, is what, I can't, what, are the, what are the people at the commentating desk are like, uh, we needed a longer match. Than this <laughs> we're going to we're gonna have to add some fluff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, Dante still doing his thing on uh, Sombra, probably sticking out as the, the lead Sombra at the moment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and she's super oppressive on these two maps, too, man, because there's so all these nooks and crannies where she's getting behind things. Even if you're trying to switch over to McCree or anything to kind of stop him and um, – him and uh, who am I thinking of? Oh, God. Uh, uh, another somber player? No, no, no. I'm trying oh. to think of uh, San Francisco. Uh, Sinatra. You're trying to stop Sinatra ah, yes. and him at the same time, man. It's so difficult because there's just so much going on. It's yeah. so hard to stop them both. Uh but yeah, so they take that one handily. Like I said, it's super short. Nothing there. It's a dominant display. And then we move into Junker Town. Town. Uh, I don't know why I sound like Town. Sound like, <laughs> town. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the South. Yeah. Um, but no, no, no. Junker Town, where San Francisco pretty much clean it up. Uh, this one's an all right fight. I mean, you can tell that Los Angeles Gladiators know they're out of it. Yeah. Uh, we get to see Shaz on Bastion. <laughs> oh. That man is uh, every every time I look up the stats for these matches with the Latin News Guiders, everybody's like, "Oh, cool, Baby Bay played McCree, he played Widow, Sinatra played uh, Tracer," and then you look at Shaz, and he's like, holy, "Holy shit, he didn't really play Hanzo this match, did he?" <laughs> he played everything. Like, yeah, yeah, he played. Yeah, and of course, he pulls out the Bastion on this one. Yeah, but it starts off. Uh, we get Baby Bay subbing in for Sinatra. 
Yeah, uh, we get Silk Thread coming back in for Asher, and then they actually interview him afterwards, and he looks super happy to be there. Yeah, I yeah. mean he's still on a Los Angeles team, so it's whatever. Uh, yeah, so I mean, round one point one. Uh, the only thing that really stuck out on defense was Gladiators went with a triple tank single healer comp, um, which was interesting. They did, and we see it later in the week as well, uh, where we see Arissa, Hog, Diva, Junk, Widow, Mercy. Um, I don't know. I, that seems weird to me. <laughs> what it, is that to counteract pirate ship, or is that to stop dive? Because I know. San Francisco, now that they have all their pieces as far as players, they're doing more of dive comps. Yeah. So is, it, is that what you think is going on? I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, it's either. it's kind of a, a counter to the, just strictly the dive comp because mm-hmm. D.Va can uh, just get in the face of, of not only the Zenyatta but the other healer as well, and Junkrat just weighing down a ton of spam and kind of pushing away the dive characters. Uh, it kind of risky, obviously, just because if you ever lose your Mercy, and Mercy yeah. gets picked off very quickly because uh, – Widow is so good on this map. She is insane on this map yeah. because it's so open. And Mercy is off, you know, often one of the first people that the Widow will look for in this situation. Yeah. So, okay, um, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned it here though, but Silk Thread still, like I said, maybe it's nerves, maybe he's getting into the groove of things. But his Genji's not not impressive here either. Yeah, he had a big, big kind of a dud blade at the very end there, where he could have picked up two or three, missed a lot of swipes, was not able to reset his dash and not off the things and this is at a point where san francisco was still pushing the cart and could have stopped but they were able to even just reset right after a blade and this is kind of a thing where you expect them to get a full wipe off of a blade only a couple people left but they reset real quick man it was kind of rough to watch yeah but um you know the one thing that did stick out was Bay Bay came in, uh, and he kind of, and this has been something they've been doing is where they put Bay Bay in for like one game. Um, now that they have Sinatra, right. Yeah. Uh, but he's still, you know, that soldier widow specialist and he has like, so on round 1.1 1. 1 on attack, uh, or point two on attack, go look at this because this clip's pretty impressive where he's pretty much the focus of the enemy on widow and he's able to get this sick 3k while evading everybody and it's like this it's like this espionage spy film kind of situation <laughs> it's um, a ducking and dodging yeah. yeah it's a reminiscent if everybody remembers uh pine stage one where he had that crazy uh i think it was a 5k on junker town um where it's like well, is it four or 5k uh, we talked about it on one of the episodes, but he was pretty much swinging around like Spider-Man and picking people off while being the target, and the cart's just moving, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's those are the Widow plays I like to see. I like to see Widow duels, but I like to see when Widow's being targeted and her moving around and still being able to get the shots. Those are the ones that look the coolest, um, just from a viewing standpoint. Yeah, because if you're under a lot of pressure, man, it, it feels so bad to try to aim with Widow. You're just like, okay. Maybe I just try to stay alive. These guys yeah. are trying to stay alive and get picks, which is absolutely <laughs> insane. And, and it, very difficult to do, man. It's yeah. Tough. But all that being said, I mean, you know, San Francisco closes it out. Um, on defense, they actually mimic what uh, the Gladiators were doing, and they're able to do it better and just lock them down. Um, and that, that's pretty much it for that match. I mean, it was a good way to start out the week. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Opinion. All right, that brings us uh, to our next day of games. Florida Mayhem versus New York. Uh, looks like New York took it all, took every game here, 4-0. <laughs> every every um, last one of them. Pretty uh, pretty rough there. Uh, but your boys did take down hey. the London Spitfire. Yeah, Houston, man, taking yeah. it 3-2. Which I don't really know how I feel about that. Okay, so I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to be ungrateful. But <laughs> London Spitfire has been going through it. Uh, they're hey. not at their peak. So it's not like we took down the, after they lost, to, uh, was it Philadelphia yeah, on stage? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they've been. I. We'll get into it. We'll get into yeah. it later in the week. But hey, yeah. take it where you can I'll get take it, it. Right? I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Get it. This this is the this is a playoff team going down here, baby. This Consider is good. Like we this all, is good for Houston. Yeah, yeah. we could, we can use the publicity. Yeah, yeah, but that uh, that brings us to the feature match, which is uh, Philly and Boston. Man, kind of a battle in two really grungy. I feel like battle street battling teams, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talk about the the brawling teams. Yeah, know? that's what these two dudes are. Yeah, it's Boston Uprising, Philadelphia Fusion, and uh, actually, uh, Los Angeles Gladiators. 
They're yeah. like they're what I consider the best street bar. You know, no yeah. picks before the fight. Yeah. Nobody getting caught out. Just yeah. we're gonna fight. Yeah, scrappy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, do you see this walkout by Snelio? Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's kind of it was uncom- awkward, right? It was kind of uncomfortable. It's that kinda- man's never been in a fist fight in his life. But. Hey. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's cool that they did the Rocky theme music, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and they got the band out there. Yeah, uh, but it yeah, was kind of it was good theatrics, but it's definitely like WWE level. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't. Qu- I don't know. It was almost goofy to be goofy, but yeah. I couldn't tell if it was serious. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's, the problem. I don't whatever. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool that they tried something. You know, they had brought up that his game, his walkout game, needed to be improved, and it definitely didn't. Get worse, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So we, you know, uh, but but you know, okay. So this this real quick stat, and this is why they did it is because up to this point, Snilio was undefeated as far as maps concerned. So whenever oh, he's right. in, yeah. Yeah, 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 he had a twelve map win streak with a two point six three KDR. That's insane. Twelve maps, and like they bring him in in a high pressure situation. So that. Bruh, that's crazy. Where is he from? He is, uh, is he Swedish? Uh, I European. think he's Swedish. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, definitely. But what, uh, so we go into this, yeah. uh, map one, Volskaya, and Boston, what, 100% win rate on this map? <laughs> yeah, that, that's all of them. Yep. You think as Philly, you're looking at that like, oh, I don't know. This is going to be tough. Maybe we got to try this cool walkout, kind of shake them up. <laughs> a bit. But yeah, like you had mentioned, Snellio starting, uh, starting yeah. out. Um, we don't see EQ at all. Um, we'll get into that later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, some big stuff that really stuck out to me on these maps, and it was kind of kind of a weird map because both teams um, take point one pretty pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but once Philly is kind of getting in the rhythm, kind of getting on in on offense, they're trying to take the point. Dream Casper has these blades that aren't. They don't look flashy. They're not crazy. They're not getting a ton of kills, but they'll pick up one or two kills and they just stop a point or it's, you know, stop a capture. Yeah. And they're just not able to come back from that kind of thing. And those kind of things where you're getting one or two picks uh, off your team, it, it wastes a ton of time off the map. So, yeah, we see this later in the week, you know, not to spoil it, but dragons are really good at this they're struggling as well or not dragons sorry <laughs> they're not good at anything the <laughs> soul dynasty got a good logo they got a really good logo <laughs> yeah um the soul Dynasty. we're being kind of mean no dragons you're all right <laughs> they're, they're turning things around soul yeah. dynasty though is good at this as well is where they stop fights in a point where they don't have to participate where you pick off the right person and then they yeah. have to reset yeah. Right, you see this on ladder, especially in platinum at platinum diamond. You see this all the time, where when you actually want to reset and when people stop drifting off and dying, you only have like a minute left. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're taking a couple minutes off off the clock each fight. Mm-hmm. Man, it's insane. We actually see this in the next map where they're, uh, and we'll get into. I just get into it really quick where they pick off just one important person once mm-hmm. you're your main tank, dude. It stops you like cold. Um, but yeah. Dream Casper, a couple good blades, and then we saw Striker, who just kind of ran over the entire map, getting picks, kind of just being a nuisance the whole time. They never yeah. dealt with him. They never even looked at him. I think it was never on the radar, or they said, well, we can't figure out how to stop this guy. Because the Tracer on defense, you generally don't think, hey, this is a really high-impact defensive character. But yeah. uh, when you're a good Tracer, it definitely is, because you're messing with the supports. The supports are going back to try to help the other supports, so that leaves the tanks open to get killed. And that's what happens over and over. Striker gets in the back line. He hops on the Zenyatta. Uh, or Lucio, and he forces the other sport to jump back there, and somebody dies. Somebody from Philly dies. Yeah. Um, and it really hurt him, for sure. I mean, they're, they're still able to pull this one out, which is impressive. Uh, uh, Boston is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boston, yeah, Boston cleans it up. I mean, they have, well, they continue to have a 100% win rate. Yeah. I mean, th- this oh, is yeah, also they one barely, week. They barely get point two, right? So they. Oh, yeah. Uh, Remember, we always say don't trust the stats, but this week we can trust the stats. The stats yeah. are pretty on point. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, I think they um, were. I think they were in the last fight. There was like thirty seconds left, and it looked like uh, Philly was going to win this map. You, mm-hmm. you 
didn't look impressive on offense, but they're like, oh, okay, they're holding it to the last second. But Note gets two really big picks on the tank somehow yes. on the right side of the map. Uh, and the rest of the team uh, of Philadelphia Fusion was Carpe being the Sombrara. Uh, I can't remember who was playing Tracer at this point. Uh, Snoopy was playing Tracer. Yeah on defense and they were just too squishy to get on the point. So you had these big tanks from Boston on the point, uh, got some early picks and just couldn't, couldn't ever get back on there. And they yeah. took it. Um, it was, it was really one push. Yeah. One thing to mention is, uh, Snilio and we've, we've talked about this is Snilio and Snilio on tracer carpe on widow dangerous. Yeah. Like that is my favorite, uh, character comp on the yeah. DPS side for, the, for Philadelphia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think they should practice that more. And we'll get into a mistake I think they made, uh, which cost them the game here. But uh, that, that's a super disruptive comp too, because you're you're constantly trying to hide in spots where Tracer is very good too, right? So you're hiding from the widow, so Sanlio is able to get in there and get picks where you're trying to be, you know, in these tight corridors. So yeah, and then yeah. we move into Blizzard World, right? Uh, which, by the way, this patch, Blizzard World. <laughs> The commentators, man, I, I love them to death. They yeah. try so hard. They know this map isn't great. And yeah. I, have you played this map on Ladder? Oh, yeah. I, so I guess everybody's still trying to figure it out. And I, obviously the pros are trying to figure it out, too. Yeah. All the commentators say is, well, hey, it looks good. <laughs> the map looks good, it looks Ryan. looks good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a problem with how they presented it because when it came out, you know, in arcade mode, they have a special mode where you can always play the map, right? Yep, yep, yep. It wasn't out for long enough, and then it went away. And yeah. if it's not the featured map, people usually don't play arcade enough to get that map in the rotation right? Um, or quick play. So a lot of people just never played the map. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even some pros talked about it where they're like, you know, even when I was laddering I didn't, or just playing casually, they don't play quick play like that. So they're right. not going to get that map. Yeah, especially learning like the defensive setups and stuff like that, and all the in and outs, man. It's it's kind of difficult just going into it, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it feels very one it, not one sided. But right now they haven't fixed the uh, how far you have to push the point. I think we've gotten that now on live, where you don't have to push it as far, but it yeah. feels pretty defensive heavy because you have that kind of that on that first point you have the back thing you can set up on with an Orisa or some kind of shield tank. And then Widow can actually stand up on a ledge in the back that is un you you can't contest her. It's it's actually pretty insane. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, Philly does take this map. Um, mm -hmm. so, kind of some big things that stuck out to me. Carpe uh, was playing the Sombra for most of the times. So he was getting these EMPs that uh, were pretty high impact, where they're catching three or four people. And if you catch three or four people, man, that's a team wipe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when they're playing like a Zenyatta. Zenyatta goes down. Uh, once one of your healers down, it's pretty difficult to come back from it. One of my favorite uh, for this week, commentating wise, was mm. just seeing the different Sombra angles. Um, yeah. Because when I played Sombra, it was, you know, because even on the game, if nobody's noticed, uh, they moved her position. Like she's no, under, she's no longer under support. They moved her out of that, that category. Yeah. So when I played her, it was still under the influence of she's a support, so I practiced her that way. So it was one of those things where I didn't really know too much about her. It was just more for fun on in quick play. But yeah. now seeing the technical professional side of her being played, it's exciting. I like the changes. You know, they went kind of far with it, um, with the hacking and stuff like that. But, you know, they reeled it back in. But it's good to see her in the league. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because you bring definitely a different element to the game where you uh, have to play a little tighter. Your supports have to play a little bit undercover a little bit more because if you're a support and you can get out of the MP range and you come back and you maybe use an ultimate or something like that, mm -hmm. that can save you from a big EMP for sure. Yeah, and she regulates some of the diva abuse um, that's yeah. been going on. So, Yeah, some uh, some stuff that definitely stuck out to me yeah. was um, Cinelio at one point – uh, catches Dream Casper. Dream Casper has this huge dead eye yeah. lined up, and they yeah. and they kind of peek over to him, and all you see <laughs> is this tracer coming right up to him, and you're like, "Oh shit, dude, he's gonna stick him." <laughs> and sure enough, he lands on him, and you put, and you definitely note it here. Snelio is a menace this entire time because yeah. he has this playstyle that's not like a lot of other tracers. 
he's uh, he's a little bit more calculated. He's kind of in the back lines, and especially with his confidence going up, you pump out these stats saying, "Hey, man, this guy's undefeated." He's coming out like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not actual boxing, but, <laughs> but it's metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's you know, one thing is that when Fraggy's alive, they do better. Yeah, and that's I'm one glad thing you bring that up. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's one thing. I mean, naturally, if you have all six people, you do better. But no, Fraggy is their guy. He's their Red Power Ranger. Yeah. Um, he definitely is important. So, you know, stat-wise, you see whenever he gets picked off early, and we talk about his Winston being, you know, fine and at competitive level, but it's not the best. Yeah. And he makes some missteps where he does jump in and play kind of like a Ryan would. Yeah. Uh, and it cost him. And that's usually when they have the most trouble. I, yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think this is solely a uh, an aggressive standpoint or is this a Poco needing to help him or is this a communication thing? Uh, what I mean, what does it look like to you? It just looks like a misstep, like, like yeah. just a mistake, just classic yeah. mistakes. Um, yeah, everybody kinda, makes, yeah. Yeah, just kind of jumping in there, getting aggressive, stuff like that. Yeah, or, or a case where, you know, it could be that and miscommunication where he feels the right move is to go in. And like we've said, um, Winston kind of leads that dive. Uh, yeah. They don't have EQO right now. So it's it's one of those cases where there may be a case where now you have Snilio in there, you have a different kind of composition. So that timing may be slightly off and then it gets picked yep. off. Like you don't have yeah. a big window. Yeah, I'd like to see more of a countdown thing going on because it looks like he is almost the first one to every fight. And mm-hmm. if you don't have that defense matrix, you know, backing you up, yeah. man, what do you, what do you do? You're just going to get melted. I mean, yeah. Winston's a high HP target with some armor, but dude, when everybody's looking at you, you got no jump, you got no bubble, you're going to die. Yeah. So, uh, so that gets us uh, onto map three. Like mm-hmm. I said, Philadelphia had had kind of dominantly taken uh, Blizzard World there. But uh, this is a, a change of pace here. This is Austin oh, Uprising, kind of kind of sticking it to him, man. Oh, putting them in their place. Um, yeah, yeah. See, this is you know, we'll get into news. News is good this week. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's unfortunate. It's, what is it's, spi- it's definitely spicy. But dude, map one is all pharma uh, pharmacy. Yeah, uh, and, and like we had talked to uh, talked about it earlier, man. Carpe picks McCree. Obviously, you know, mm-hmm. this is a map that's very good for pharmacy. Um, Philadelphia doesn't have a pharmacy on their on their lineup at this point because we don't have EQO. We don't have Shadowburn. Those are guys that play uh, generally your Farah. Uh, so Carpe picks up the McCree. Uh, McCree kind of lost on this map. Yeah. And he, Carpe, a great McCree, finds some heads later oh, on in the series. Oh, he had 64 uh, percent accuracy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, later on, especially on Route 66, he is very good at this character. Mm-hmm. But, man, when you're getting dove on this tight map, and this map is very tight. you got the and well right there in the middle. Yeah. yeah. you got the well right in the middle, and you got a D.Va and Winston on you constantly. you got no room for error, and you definitely ha- don't have any room to, to look for a Farah and a Mercy. So uh, it was pretty dominant on the sign of Dream Casper on Farah. Yeah, and that's sure. pretty much what drives that 88 per, uh, win percentage for them is that they, people have a hard time. It doesn't matter how good you are dealing with his Fara and yeah. Widow um, because on, on like you said, on Wells, his Fara pretty much dominates. Um, yeah. And then when you get to Ruins, it's even worse when he switches to Widow, right? Just, <laughs> he's yeah. real good at forcing you to duel him, and then when you're not really doing that well, he's picking off your teammates. Yeah, yeah. I actually made a, a note here that uh, so Philly takes the point uh, uh, point two uh, relatively quickly, but once Boston takes it, uh, Dream Casper does not let Philadelphia get back on the point. No. Not Boston doesn't let him. Dream <laughs> Casper does not let Philadelphia get back on the point. Uh, this is a pretty dominant um, widow map, and if. One of the widows is obviously doing really well, and Dream Casper was doing really well on uh, on Widow here. It's pretty dominant. Yeah, and we see later in the uh, week what happens when you can't deal with a widow maker on ruins. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you just don't win the map. That's, yeah, you don't. I mean, that's yeah. kind of what it is. That's what it's come down to. But that's how it should be at the pro level, right? At the C, you have yep. to account for this. Yep, there's going to be maps like that that, man, you just have to pick a certain character. You have to have somebody on your lineup that can do that kind of thing. And, 
Carpe, the, not being said, Carpe is a really good widow, but Dream Casper was the dominant of the two. Yes, he was. He was in it. Uh, so that brings us to the uh, to, to the fourth map, Route yes. sixty six, um, and so Philadelphia is able to tie it back up. Mm-hmm. Um, no spoilers. We do go to a fifth map, um, and like you comment here, man, Carpe here is is on fire on the McCree. Yeah. So like I mentioned, the previous map, even though they got rolled. He wasn't doing bad. He was yeah. 64% uh, yeah. accuracy. And if you know anything about high-level McCree play, the average is around 40. Are you S- telling me my 30% is not good? <laughs> I'm shooting shields to get it Clay. up, Ryan. I'm shooting shields. I, you know, I hate for the low blow, but you were 30 points off of top 500 for a reason. That's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not good at McCree. That's for damn sure. <laughs> He's close, folks. He's getting there. We'll we'll announce it when he when yeah. he hits top five hundred. Yeah, I'm going out for drinks. But yeah, I mean Carpe. Yeah, he goes he goes ham here, and Stilio is still in the game. So remember that yep. point. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but his his McCree is probably one of the big driving forces for McCree coming back into the meta. Yeah, um, is that when people see that play, they're like, okay, well, I got to be able to do that uh, because right, it right. solves a lot of problems for that tracer sombra uh, sombra combo. That's hard to yeah. say. That's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, I, I I wrote down here Philly going into point three, and you don't see this very often. Four minutes left on the clock. Do you ever get to point three <laughs> on Route sixty six with four minutes? Hell no. You're scraping. You're scraping by a minute and a half. You're like, that oh. sounds like fake news. <laughs> yeah, four minutes. Nah, that can't be right. Yeah, four minutes left on the clock. Kind of leaves you a lot of room for error. But they able, like you said, man, Carpe. Uh, when left alone, is able to find the back line, get those picks really quick, and uh, pretty dominant. Yeah, yeah, they stop them short and then take it. Yeah, um, pushes over to the uh, Boston offense, right? Yeah, so Boston offense, mm-hmm. Dreamcaster picks an early widow. Uh, no one really there. Carpe picks Sombra initially, um, which doesn't deal with widow really good. Uh, really well, especially because it's hard to get back there, especially when they have a Widowmaker next to him. Um, but Carpe soon switches it back over to the Widow, and they kind of battle it out for a little bit. Uh, but Philly still pretty dominant. Not a huge time bank for Boston going into the third point, and uh, it really helps Philadelphia out for sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then we get into at one of I'm going to call it a coaching mistake. I'm just going to call it a coaching mistake because. This it feels like it. It feels like it. I, I know we, exactly what you're getting to. Shadowburn coming in for Snailio. Yeah. Snailio is pretty hot at this point, I feel yeah. like, right? Yeah. And, and this comes down to, and we've talked about this all the time, uh, they say, all right, this is the map. This is the meta for this map. Uh, you got to have a Farrah Mercy on this map. So we bring Shadowburn on, you know, in because he plays Farrah. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't feel right. I mean, <sighs> you got to, and the commentators bring it up uh, all the time. You're warming up, but you're not warming at a pace, you know, warming up at a pace what the game is playing at, right? Yeah, you're game not, speed. Yeah, right. And not saying that he did a bad job, but all the guys that he's playing against have been out there the whole time. Mm-hmm. They've been killing people. Dream Casper, uh, just as good as Shadowburn, or Shadowburn just as good as Dream Casper on, on Farah, uh, but he's picking him out of the sky because he's out there warmed up already. Yeah, it's, it, I have, you know, Mark here as a mistake. I don't. Snilio, I get it to this point. So this happens in other leagues, right? Where you have a case where your main player gets hurt or is out of the game, so you bring in the bench guy, and the bench guy's used to playing, like in basketball, he's used to playing like 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes a game. Yep. And now he has to play a full game. So I figured fatigue may have averaged into this decision, Um, but even on the main stage, when we had our last playoffs, I mentioned that this is a mistake. Don't take him out. Yeah. Snilio's hot like that, unless he's just, unless he goes in like hot dung mode, where he's just getting getting picked picked off every two seconds, he's constantly dead. Don't take him out, because that kid is so driven by just momentum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this was uh, stats-wise. And he can play soldier. Yeah, So. You can oh, he was a he was definitely a, a past soldier player too. Yeah. He he definitely could have played it here, and I think we see later on where people do play Farah into a, a non traditional non hit scan account, and Farah doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, but six, Stanley goes sixty two and nineteen <laughs> going into this map. The kid, the kid is on fire. Keep him in. See what he can do. This is a, this is a coaching mistake. It has to be. 
It, um, it feels like it because uh, stat-wise, uh, Philly has way more kills. They win more fights. They they look like a better team at this point, especially coming out. It's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, 2-2, yeah, two, two, especially coming out of Route 66. They look dominant. Just uh, keep the same lineup. If it doesn't work out, whatever. But don't get 2 0 real quick by um, – by a different farm, and you know what? You know, fair for, mercy for because you know I'm always on the competitive Reddit, kind of you know jabbing off and talking to people, and it's one of those things where all you Shadowburn fans out there that have been begging for him to come back in and play. This is your fault. Yeah, this whatever. is your fault. Bring him in map one if you want to yeah, see him. Because everybody, everybody was mad that oh EQA EQO's here and he took Shadow on the spot and Shadowburn's good and they just need him time to flourish, but he came in and his far I looked amateurish. It was. I get you're playing against Dream Casper, who's one of the best Faras, but yep. in this situation, I like if Coach was like, "Hey, I want you to go in there. You're gonna play Farah. We're gonna try to do pharmacy versus pharmacy." I would be like, Le- "Leave him in there. Leave Snillio yeah. in there. Let him play Soldier yeah. or something, because this is a bad move." Yeah, kids on fire. Uh, but maybe, maybe he thought it was his time to shine, and he didn't shine at all. No, uh, no. I hate to be harsh, but it looked it looked bad. It, this, yeah. this is game five. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Especially, st- and it's not game five, stage one. This is game five, stage three. We're getting to the end. I mean, this is going to be a playoff team regardless, but still, yeah. man. Let's get the map get the map wins where we can. How do you feel about if they were left Snilio in, put him on Soldier, let Carpe keep playing McCree since he's performing very well, and just do double hit scan and see how that works against the, the it, uh, probably fine. I mean, uh, sometimes pharmacy is not as great as a lot of people. I mean, it's very disruptive, but it's not as great as some some picks on McCree are fine enough. Uh, but Snilio could be so disruptive on Tracer that Carpe could sit on uh, on McCree. Uh, I mean, I like double hit scan. Don't get me wrong, but Snilio is so disruptive on Tracer that. Maybe you don't even need to do double hit scan. Maybe yeah. he's killing off your supports, and you don't have to do anything about it. You don't need to bring somebody in that uh, is not warmed up. I mean, I, I don't know. The kid's yeah. on fire. Yeah. So, All right, that brings us into Friday, where we have uh, Los Angeles Gladiators and the Dallas Fuel battle it out. And uh, Gladiators redeem themselves. After a kind of a tough loss early in the week, they, uh, they take on Dallas and beat them 3-1. Still a good so. team, man. Yeah, absolutely. Dallas still kind of figuring some stuff out, but uh, we'll see. We'll see in stage four how those guys look. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we had Los Angeles versus the mighty Shanghai. The buy game. <laughs> damn. The mighty, mighty dragons. The Shanghai buy dragons. Yeah. Damn. We should say, by the way, uh, Gaguri looking good. Yeah, she is crushing it. Yeah, stat wise, uh, I was looking at some of her stuff earlier in the week. Actually, really good. I mean, no doubts about it. We saw videos and stuff going into it. That, that and Ado looked really good on mm-hmm. Genji earlier in the week. Uh, but this is definitely a team game. This isn't a game that one person can carry yeah. on their shoulders. Uh, so it's just got. It's going to come down to coordination yeah. and, and getting everybody on the same page. But uh, Los Angeles does take it 4-0, kind of a dominant 4-0, bringing us into the shock and the dynasty. Yeah, man. Did uh, you uh, – did you have any thoughts going into this? Yeah. Like, man, it's going to be a, a tight one. I thought Obviously. it was be nuts considering that, you know, the way the Valiant dealt with the Soul Dynasty earlier in the week. And yeah. And then um, yeah. the the rampage the San Francisco's been on. Yeah. I like, yeah, I thought this would have been a little tighter. Yeah. And it was, it was tight on some maps, but mm-hmm. um, Dynasty definitely looking dominant compared to... Uh, the 4-0 that got handed to him from the Los Angeles yeah. Valiant earlier in the week. And we talked about that game being kind of a test of the rest of their roster. Um, we've seen London do this too, where I think they're doing it for a different reason, but it that their roster they used in their first game definitely played into that them having trouble. Uh, but here they showed that that main roster is still – Fled is still nuts. Fled is definitely still nuts, for sure. Yeah, we get into it. Yeah, so map one, Temple of Anubis. Um, it just sorry, just off the top, <laughs> you know, yeah. we talked about the stats. In this one, the stats don't matter. Literally, all every map that's played today, each team is tied with a fifty percent win rate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no one's favorite on any of these maps, which is another reason <laughs> that led me to believe, oh, this is going to be close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of, <laughs> you know, I was in the same boat going into it, and I was just like, oh man, this is a by map two, I'm just like, oh, this is mm-hmm. kind of rough. Um, but yeah, so Temple of Anubis, uh, 
who started on offense? I think it was uh, Shock started on offense, kind of took – so they took point one relatively quickly. No, no, no. Neither of them took it quickly, actually, right? Because we yeah. went into point two, like three or four minutes on both clocks for going on to the offense. Yeah. It's pretty much um, overtime. Yep, yep. Um, so who was on offense first? Shock was on offense first, mm-hmm. and um, Wakeed – uh, big blade to start him out, and we see him kind of switch between uh, Genji and and Junkrat throughout this yes. this series. Is Junkrat still nuts? Yeah, very nuts. Yeah, I think at one point on defense he gets a three K, and this is after a big MP from the Shock. You know, Shock invests a lot of ultimates into a MP. They had already had a pick on I think Riju Hong. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it looks very good for him, and uh, he kind of sneaks around a corner. Fires up the tire and gets that 3K because uh, Shock had put themselves on that bridge going into point two. Yeah. Kinda, bu- you know, bundled themselves up. And and one thing we get to see here, which we talked about before, was Dynasty are great at getting the picks on people who are important. Sorry, I'm kind of, kind of gassy here. <laughs> I'm burping a good bit. <laughs> Uh, sorry, <laughs> listeners. But the, the, the thing is, like, they don't fight fights they don't have to. Yeah, and we definitely. see that on the first point where you know they're able to pick off people, they have to reset, or they pick off a person, they have to reset. So they never really get a good fight or in a comfortable rhythm, uh, which kind of puts them on that back foot the whole time. And that you can, yeah, you can see that throughout uh, because when when you're not comfortable, when your comp is like, okay, well, we have to get through and get it this time, and they have to change their comp and then change back. Your alt economy is all off, and the, yep. those yep. it really affects it. And it's definitely a a more South Korean style, uh, not that brawly style we talk about with yeah. like gladiators and such. Yeah, definitely but, a little bit more methodical. Yes, and well thought, and it's especially on Temple of Anubis, where this is an all-in map. If you're not, uh, if you're not winning map. the entire. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody it's does. Fucking miserable. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not winning uh, the fight by killing most of the other team, man, it's so hard to tank point two. And yeah. I think that's why we see both teams. Uh, and we just talked about this. Uh, I think. What San Francisco gets sixty percent or something? Yeah, like sixty six percent. Yeah, no, yeah, and then Soul Dynasty able to turn it around, come back and take point two. Not much time left on the clock either. This is a close map, um, but yeah, it definitely comes down to killing everybody and and taking the point and yeah. kind of holding it. Time bank plays a big uh, factor in these games yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, takes us to uh, the next map, which is Blizzard World. Uh, where we get Munchkin come in for Wicked, and Munchkin, what generally just a tracer player for the Soul Dynasty. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we see Soul Dynasty kind of throwing, uh, throwing the shock off with this triple tank somber com- uh, comp going into yeah. it, which is just big, bulky, a lot of HP, a lot of disruption, and it really messes up a team like Shock, which is kind of one dimensional, right? We kind of think yeah. of Shock, they're kind of this traditional dive comp they have sinatra who plays you know pretty much plays tracer only for the most part um kind of messes that kind of strategy up and yeah and, and the the they don't stop moving that payload with this comp like it's constantly moving the whole time and you know we said time bank becomes a factor and that's where they win it here because that it takes it takes shock a great a good amount of time to get in the position to wipe them yeah um to kind of reset it a bit and then they switch back to more of a standard comp but it's so yep. close i think they're like like two two ticks away from the point uh two steps away from the point when they are forced to switch off of this so yeah yeah i think they go into point three and we talked about it earlier on mm-hmm. another map uh route 66 going into point three with like three or four minutes yeah it's even even fucking harder to run. <laughs> Have you seen this map? It's ridiculous. Oh. Point three with yeah. four minutes left. And to mention, this is the pre-adjustment yeah. Blizzard World. Yeah, we don't have the further, you know, the little bit further back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we or right now we have a further back spawn Correct. to get to the, the car back to. So yeah. it's a little bit harder for the offense to get all the way there. Especially, you know, so four minutes. That's pretty unreal. Yeah. So uh, there's one cool thing. So on attack, so. Dragon's cap or uh, Dynasty cap it right, and then we move into San Francisco Shock on their attempt, and it's rough. Uh, they have a real hard time moving it along, and even at one point, and this shows you how good Super is. 
they get wiped on their essentially second to last attempt or what would have been their last attempt. Super does a, the Winston double jump from that that second yeah. that last spawn yeah. to to contest it. Pops primal obviously to get that second jump, knocks people around and then lives. So he doesn't just die; he lives, gets back, and they're able to fight that one out and push it into overtime. Yeah. Uh, but because they're fighting in overtime, they don't have any more time in their bank uh, when they move into the follow-up round. Yeah. So Soul goes into it with what, like two and a half minutes left? Yeah. Which uh, is after a big time bank, yeah. which is uh, quite a bit of time, but not as much time as you generally start with. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually wrote down the same stat that you did when I took my notes. <laughs> They're down to like 45 seconds, maybe a minute left, and it looked like so. Uh, the shock was able, you know, maybe going to get a draw on this one. Yeah. Uh, but Fleta pops Dante first and then finds Sinet- uh, Sinatra right after. And oh, at that point, three nice shots. Yeah, this is kind of like Nubani, where both teams kind of start at a same uh, distance spawn wise when you die. Yeah. So, so getting back is kind of even. It feels like so team fights are a little bit weirder um but yeah dude this really shakes it up this uh this kind of takes the whole thing yeah man it, it, it was it was hard to watch but you know one cool thing from this map uh because you know i talk about i like jonak he's our lord and savior uh but the true god <laughs> is ryu jayhong um and he plays more of this whole map uh and i'm hype because it's one of those cases where like, I feel like meta calls, like, it makes sense. Moira should be in there more now. Um, with all the tracer play you have, with now, you know, the Sombra thrown in there as well, it 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 makes sense that she should be more in the meta. And you're seeing people kind of touch on her, but not playing her committingly. Um, yeah. Sleepy also was playing her more this week as well. So I like to see her coming in because she gets a bad rep for having a large kit, but not really a high skill ceiling and i think that's bs um because nuance is everything right like fisher is a great winston player yeah winston's not super complicated but there's a lot of nuance and he capitalizes on that absolutely same concept uh so definitely good to see yeah and i love the fact that she puts out a ton of damage too especially uh kind of this like side damage where it's it's like incremental when you're in a small space yeah uh you see sometimes these balls come in, you're like, oh, it's just a Mora ball. It'd be fine. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit, this thing took me from 200 to 80 <laughs> really quickly. What am yeah. I? Yeah, it's insane. And it, it lets those kind of flankers come in there and do the rest. Man, I can cool. say that I I think Coalescence will be nerfed soon. Um, you think so? Yeah, it's, it has a high, like. The, I think, yeah, maybe bringing the alt time down, right? Yeah. A yeah. Lot, Make it a little I bit think, more difficult. Take, take yeah. at least one. Con- uh, coalescence out of every map like if you were to get five now you get about four yeah because jay hong here was averaging one per fight and then <laughs> one point average two per fight <laughs> which the it's only so su- the only support that i think should get two uh two ults for fight is jonak like that guy deserves yeah. him he's he's killing people he's healing yeah he's the only one that's allowed to get two ults uh, <laughs> no one else no one else gets but them. this is his sensei he yeah, trained him. I guess. <laughs> this is at, at uh, the student becomes the master at this yeah. point. Ruji Hong, uh, talk to your boy. He's uh, he's killing you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that brings us uh, into Ilios. Yeah. And and like you noted here, both teams kind of fi- uh, tied at 50% win rate. Yeah, at so, this moment. Um, we comment here that uh, we had fl- they. They went on the back of Fleta. Right? Yeah. His accuracy on McCree is kind of insane. It's definitely a uh, – it's a semblance to Carpe. Like, he looks yeah. like Carpe here. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah Fleta, you know, good in his own right. Definitely has a huge fan base. Uh, but here is his – because he plays Widow as well later on Ruins, and that's pretty much what puts him ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, and it's kind of crazy that Shock end up. Uh, Shock's one of these teams that's always going to kind of take, especially on control points. They're going to, uh, being that they're generally the aggressor, they're, they kind of play this one style. Uh, they take the point really quick, um, and and they always will. 
they get it to 80 and then they lose it and never can take it back, yeah. which is kind of odd because they, they farm two MPs, they get two MPs off, never take the point back, which is, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's miscommunication, they're not all, you know, all getting on the same person. Because we've seen this team, when they're all well coordinated, well, you know, they're all diving the mm-hmm. same target, man, they really take out targets. Yeah, and, you know, they're, I, I noticed one theme over the last couple of weeks is that when Soul Dynasty takes a point, they don't they don't lose it. It's almost like um, we talked about gladiators, where when gladiators have control of a point, they squeeze every last percentage out of it, and they're great at stalling points out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where S- Dynasty is really good at taking points and pushing the fight off of points, yeah. so that you have to con- you don't get to really contest and fight them at the same time. You have yeah. to pick one. Either you put yourself in the position where you're trying to protect the point and take it, or you go find where they are and fight them off point, yeah. and then hopefully win and then take it. Um, which is is never a great situation to be in because they're great at picking people off. Yeah, yeah, they just got to figure out how to get points back. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing because we see it all over the, uh, especially er, in this stage for sure. They, they, they take these points, lose them, and can never get them back. And on Lighthouse, the only way that they were able to flip it back was because Nevix had a pretty sick. It was a well positioned bomb um, that put, you know, like I said, how how dynasty set up to fight it put them yep. in a position where they couldn't get back to point so they were able to flip it and get the kills off of that bomb um yeah. to push them to yep. three but ruins it's just it was just flood of flood us widow just dominating yeah um, kind of similar yeah. to dream casper early in the week yeah and and we don't have especially going into this one we didn't have baby b and if you don't have a widow on this yeah. map it is very very difficult to win yeah, and what? Uh, I, oh, I, oh, I was gonna say, I, it's just hard. It's very difficult to win. Yeah. So. Uh, Baby Bay's, he's an interesting widow because I don't. Baby Bay's fine, right? Yeah. But when it comes to widows, I feel like he's like the discount yeah. <laughs> widow, and he does yeah. have an impressive, uh, you know, display during this week. But he's he's like the widow you get if you need a widow to win thirty percent of the fights. Yeah, or twenty five percent of the fights. Well, and especially because we're not getting much out of them besides the widow, right? We're getting yeah. some soldier. Soldier not great right now. Yeah, McCree. He plays a little bit of McCree. Not great right now. Yeah. Uh, but it's not like someone like Carpe who's switching over to the widow or Dream Casper that's switching yeah. over to the widow. That's providing a ton more, uh, a ton more options. You can yeah. get more hero pool out of these guys. And it's also You're exactly case, right. Yeah, it's also a case where he's kind of the head of the team as well. Like he's really yeah. the leading face, the more charismatic. So it, it's a weird position. I get it. Yep. Um, and I hope that he looks like he's getting better, though. He looks yeah. like he's getting better. And now having Sinatra in the mix, it's definitely up the level of, you know, uh, expectations on his end. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into the last map. And this was a, this was a, I wouldn't say a dominant 4 0 by Soul Dynasty, but, uh, Kind of handedly uh, shelling out some wins there. Yeah, they wrapped it up this one. Uh, I would just actually need to point out uh, on attacked Ryu Jehan on the May. On the May. <laughs> I love it, man. And, I man. love it because it's so. De- it, it, it's one of those characters that you don't see very often. So a lot of these guys probably don't know how to play against somebody that's really good on the May. You yeah. don't see it on ladder very often. You don't see it in high level <laughs> level competitive play. So. Uh, playing against May, especially Ryuji Hong on May, yeah, pretty uh, pretty disruptive. Yeah, uh, and definitely I'm gonna start practicing my May in deathmatch so everybody be ready. Uh, yeah, because it's a great way to stall points. Um, but here, you know, I think now Ryuji Hong is second as far as play time behind yeah. on May behind hydration, I believe. Yep. Uh, so that's hype. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Do you think you know they so they wrap up Junk Town? They take it easy, easily. Junk Town. Yep. Junker Town. But yeah. with Architect now in the roster, which is another DPS, right? So now they have five DPS um, yeah. on their payroll, which is interesting. Yep. Uh, do you think – I'm not familiar with Architect's pool, but does it overlap with Baby Bay? Let's see. Because I think IDD QD might get traded. Uh, yeah. Because they're, not, so they're not using him. So IDD Q hasn't played – any maps yet yeah. i don't think 
Let's see. And there, they, there have been some questions. So back to the you know competitive Reddit as far as should he go to contenders? I'm a little embarrassed. I forgot the IDDQ he was on that team. <laughs> exactly. Most people did. <laughs> I feel so bad. No, <laughs> man. I mean, it is what it is. It's ah. Uh, sometimes you don't use all your resources. <laughs> I get, and it was crazy because IDDQ is insane. Oh, his at hit scan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we don't see as much hit scan. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, I don't see it here, okay. but we'll figure it out over the next couple of weeks. I'm yeah, sure. we'll, we'll see. And that might be a, that might be a case where they have to start using uh, IDQD because there are people that need him. Uh, yeah, with McCree coming back into the in the mix, and then there are certain teams that have trouble with not having a widow uh, of yep. a certain standard. So, yeah. The only two stat lines that I want to point out mm-hmm. were uh, Diva only getting played seventy five. Or seventy eight percent of the time here, which is you know kind of odd because it's usually ninety nine percent. Hey, you step in the right direction. Yeah, I, guess, I don't know. And then uh, we thought we saw the end of the Mercy meta. Seventy three percent of the games overall, she was played in. The res is still important. Um, so good, especially think, with Widowmaker. And yeah. I think the res is in the right place. Like this is what res should have always been. Handled yep. like this. Um, yep. it, it's punishable mm-hmm. if you're in the wrong place. It's not easily. I mean, you know, the casting time's good. I like it. Yeah, and that's what that's what's happening is people are now protecting the mercy, especially the competitive level, yep. so you can get that res off. Um, people are being more creative with reses. People are dying in better spots so they can be yep. rest. So yep. you're seeing that adjustment, and this this looks like more of a competitive use. So uh, absolutely. So we wrap up the week with something that should have been a banger, man. Fireworks everywhere. I mean, they hyped it up. Uh, this is a repeat from what first first stage playoffs. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it let us down. <laughs> don't don't trust the stats. Um, yeah, you know we ring the bell from the tower. But so we have New York Excelsior versus London Spitfire. But nope. first, let me get you our honorable mentions. Never forget those. Uh, to finish up this week, we had Florida Mayhem versus Philadelphia Fusion. You wanted to skip this one. You wanted to skip it. I could tell in your I- voice. The Houston Outlaws versus Bob, I, Boston Uprising. No, Did they play this week. <laughs> Look, you wanted to get into the feature match. I could tell you wanted to skip this one, and I know why. This was going to be our bonus match. This was going to be going to be our bonus match, and I wiped yeah. that from the damn sheet because I I refused. Uh, you know what? I don't know how close you follow your boys. They were down touring in Texas, <laughs> being all casual. <laughs> Boston Uprising, putting in work in the uh, in the what they play in some kind of room or something. I don't know. What I they don't do. know some kind of yeah. dungeon. Okay, yeah. Let's focus. Let's focus. Florida Mayhem, yeah. Philadelphia Fusion, three one. Philly takes it. Florida Mayhem yep, yep. still working out some stuff. Uh, Logic still underrated. Um, yeah, dude's good at Tracer. Yeah, he's sure. good. We need good to at give him, uh, good at Widow too. Yeah, yeah, give him a little more. A little more. Uh, a little more FaceTime, but yeah, Houston yeah. Outlaws get we get stomped by Boston Uprising. And all so that barbecue. I'm, I have I have my jersey money. Like I have it sitting next to my desk. You send ready. that you you give that to San Francisco. You give that to a team <laughs> that deserves to, a jersey. I'm glad I bought the agility jersey now. I was a little upset Man. at first, but now I'm happy. You need you need an in and out patch. To put <laughs> the oh, they make a they make a delicious burger, man. Delicious that, burger. That, that trip to In and Out really turned that team around. Oh man, but yeah. I, so Houston Outlaws get trampled. Uh, four zero to Boston. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. I said it. All right, you feel better. <laughs> you Tra- my trampled is yeah, yeah. Uh, but no. So let's get let's let's get into the real the real shit. So yeah, yeah. Uh, New York Excelsior versus London Spitfire. So up to this point. Uh, this team has met three times uh, throughout the season so far, and yep. it's gone to game five every time. So currently, London Spitfire lead in games two to one. Uh, yeah, because this was uh, stage one playoffs. This was the battle that everybody wanted to see. Yeah, This was the, the, the two dominant forces coming against each other. And one just happened to be not so dominant <laughs> yeah. this Saturday afternoon. So we get to see, you know, oh, map one. So Temple of Anubis, we get into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. New York Celsius struggles a little bit on getting that first point, but then Liberal kind of steps up. He gets a 3K. Uh, 
on Genji with some quick dashes, kind of connects yep. the dots, pushes yep. them through. They kind of wrap it up. Uh, and then we move to Spitfire, who just, they do the Sombra Tracer comp, which is now popular. We're on the Sombra meta. Uh, so yep. it's good to see that. But they just don't look as tight as other teams has looked or have looked. Yeah. Um, and it's a case where, like, if you don't look as good as San Francisco looked playing in that comp, it's kind of weird. You're a London Spitfire. You should yeah. be, you should be on point. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, they they just struggle throughout. Um, it's it's a case where SPP. <laughs> this play was sick. Okay, so there's round two, right? So we get to round two, and on attack, Profit cannot find. SBB with the tire. It's a weird tire because usually somebody gets killed, right? But yeah. his tire is traveling around and <laughs> there's nobody. Like, there's no other characters on the map. <laughs> and he blows it up, misses SBB, and then SBB gets this huge 3K bomb, which still play that highlight uh, for oh, yeah. the day. End of time, yeah. yeah end of time uh, because it's so cool. And then you see him get hype on stage. Um, he's been interacting with the crowd more, and people are like, "Oh, face of Overwatch, let's do." Because that's been a big, big discussion. We'll get into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's these games aren't that exciting. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, man. And, it, and it's <laughs> it's a little irritating because I, I don't know what's up with Birdering this time around. But man, he is usually a little bit more important than this. He looks shaken. He dyed his hair. Maybe that. Maybe that's something. Yeah, so those chemicals are getting to his <laughs> brain. Chemicals. He can't hit any shots, Ryan. I don't know what his problem is. He, he, no. But seriously, he does look shaken. He doesn't look confident, and it really pays a big, you know, a big toll on these guys, yeah. man. They, you got to be on point, and especially. And I look at every person on the New York Excelsior team. There is, a, there is no, uh, there's no leaks. There's no. Uh, Bad spots. I, I don't know the good the good phrasing for it. No gaps. Libero, yeah, no gaps. Libero used to be the guy that you're you're a little shaky on. You're like, all right, well, he's not doing great this map. SBB's having to pick it up. He's doing great on every map now. <laughs> SBB's doing great on every map now. You got Mano and Mecco. You got Janice coming in yeah, for uh, Mano. The team is the best. The team is the it, best. It's, you, it's, it blows my mind. You mentioned it, a good point, though, is that they do have gaps, and you see certain maps that we talked about, you know, on previous podcasts, where it's like, oh, they got rolled on that first map, or something like yeah. that, where they have tiny gaps and small rooms for error, but teams can't capitalize on it. No, and that's no, they the can. problem. Yeah, uh, because the whole point of you know comp play, people say, is, you know, try to play perfect or try to play well and not make many mistakes. But if you make mistakes, make sure your opponent can't capitalize on them to put yourself in the best situation. Absolutely. And that's what New York Excelsior is doing is when they do make mistakes, it's such a small window, you can't really do anything about it. Yeah. I mean, when Jonak is your is a better DPS than your DPS on the other team, <laughs> what do you do against that, Ryan? So what good. do you do? Did you see the volley when he volleyed fair? Uh, we'll get into it. We'll get into I it. I don't want to think about it, uh, man. It so they take, t- <laughs> they take Temple of Anubis, New York Excelsior. We hop yep. into Blizzard World, and here goes a new theme for this whole match. It's like, what is London doing in the background? So we don't have as much visibility into London's... Uh, Day to day, outside yeah. of like off the field type stuff, like yeah, we get on that, on, guys. Yeah, are get they on that? Are they eating at it now? Like, what's going on? <laughs> hey, hey, New York just put out a video of uh, SBB and the boys going shopping. Where's yeah. the London video? You're not allowed to go shopping. <laughs> not allowed to go there. I've never seen this many subs throughout one game. So yeah, first of all, Pine's back. Yep, yep, yep. Pine's Crowd's back. loving it. There's one point, like, they show, like, Pine's back. They go to his camera, and you can't see anybody. And they're like, show us your face. And then he pops out from the bottom. Yeah. I like that guy's enthusiasm, yeah. too. And like I said on a, a past cast, his his stream is one of the best streams you can watch. He's very yeah. positive, and he's very entertaining. Yeah. Man, the guy's very – it seems like a real cool yeah. guy. And he was going through some personal stuff. He's had yeah. that taken care of. The team was supportive, and now he's back. And, yep. you know, he did all right. He did pretty solid. He saw back sub back in for uh, Blizzard World because McCree is good on Blizzard World. Yeah, we're seeing more McCree now with the Sombra Tracer meta, um, and he was solid. But it looked like he wasn't really feeling it. 
Yeah, and and it's it's I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, he's dueling Bird Ring this whole map, widow v widow, and they get to the point where he's like, you know what? I, I'm not hitting my shots. I'm going to switch off this. I'm going to play Junkrat, which I don't know why people switch over to Junkrat when they're not hitting their shots. He's <laughs> very. <laughs> Very extremely high skill cap character as far as aiming is concerned. <laughs> uh, not really sure what he was thinking there, but he does really well. He gets some big traps, yeah. uh, hits those hard shots, which are hard to hit with Junkrat. Um, and SVB actually plays Widow, holds the point. They never take point two no. or uh, tank point one, yeah. which is kind of crazy because Newer gets stopped. They get stopped at point uh, before point yeah. three. I mean, there was like, even a point where Janice tries to back at, which was hilarious. Oh, that was great. It cost them a really big push because their whole team died in that room yeah. because they didn't have a main tank. But uh, that being said, it was pretty cool to watch, and it probably shakes up London. Like, oh, dude, this guy's back in the back. He does, he's yeah. not even with his team. He's just yeah. trying to cap the point. Uh, I think that was the point where London needed to turn their whole map around or mm-hmm. the whole series around because uh, obviously New York didn't do great. On offense, this is your chance. Exactly. But, like, so talking about substitution. So all we had, excuse me, is that Pine came in for Libero. That's New York. London had Heigo Pen sub in for Bedosin. They had Closer come in for Nuss. And they had Wuhal come in for Fury. So you basically have a new team on the stage. Yep. What? Why? I, that, okay. That's map two. There's yeah. no reason. I, I, I don't know. It's definitely a problem because we'll move to Nepal and you, they have Horeg then sub in for Birdring. So it's like. It, and this is something people have been calling out London for since stage, the beginning of stage two. Figure out who is on your A squad. Figure out who's, you know, doing. I, I just don't know if these guys are, are shaken yeah. or they don't feel confident. Maybe they're the one saying, maybe Birdring's the one saying, hey, I don't feel comfortable. Get somebody in here. This yeah. has got to be a confidence thing, man, or a coaching staff thing. It's something is going on where they're making all these big switches. I don't like it. It's yeah, it's definitely confidence because you you start looking at the camera angles and everybody yeah. does not look like. I'm happy glad you brought that up. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> like, you brought that. But Dosen, who's usually more of a happy-go-lucky guy, is just looks dour. Yeah, you know who's having a good time? New York. <laughs> New York is having a great time. Everybody, oh, they're high. Hey, yeah. Yeah. They might as well oh, have like it. a disco ball and just dubstep playing on that side of the mat, like side, that side of the venue. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm so glad I bought that New York jersey too, man. man you, I have my I jersey. Buy, I, I'm waiting. I I didn't buy it yet, but I'm I'm going to. I'm going future to. reference. I'm getting me one. <laughs> the um, but even here, you know, we talk about substitutions. Mono comes back in for Janice, and Libero comes back in for Pine. But that doesn't have the same effect on their roster because they're one no. of those smaller teams. So yeah. it, it's more of a natural. Like when New York subs, nobody really pays attention because they just have that. That everybody's already in that yeah. mode. Yeah, it's very fluid. Yeah, it's right? a fluid it, transition. It feels like the same team. They kind of have the same methodical. Sl- and they're not a dive comp team. No. They uh, they play a dive uh, composition, but they're not aggressive. They're yeah. very methodical. They're more reactive than proactive, uh, and they're they're more about. Uh, capitalizing mistakes that you make, mm-hmm. they're going to make lower mistakes. Yeah, uh, a great team to watch. Yeah, it's a very interesting process. And yeah. we, you know, so they bring in they bring in Horeg because they want to do the farmer uh the farmer. And Horeg combo. is uh, from the past. He is a great. Oh yeah. Fera. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, the problem is you got Jonak on the other oh hand. Gosh. Putting could you sweet sweet orbs on you. <laughs> Bringing you out of the sky. Could you imagine what it does to your confidence when yeah, you take you just, out your hit scan specialist? So yep. they bring in their Farah specialist. Oh, I was thinking the exact same thing watching and this. Your support is able to deal with them. Yeah, it's a, one guy. One guy. Yeah. Like he's just it, hunting Horeg the whole they, time. And they're, they're calling it farm, you know, they call it pharmacy because it's two people. This guy has taken. <laughs> Care of two people in your composition. It's, what are you doing? It's funny because you look at Horeg and he's just like, he's concussion blasting. He's doing as much erratic movement as he can as yeah. these orbs are just you can't blind. get <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> he's finding face, man. You know, he's fine. They, they get one kill on Shrine. Yeah. The whole team gets one kill. 
Yeah, they're looking at the gold. Me- you know, at the when you're playing on ladder and you're like, oh, who's got gold medals? <laughs> the, whole, the whole London team's like, what's that? Oh, what's gold medals right now? They're like, oh, it's one. It's one, guys. But so. yeah, Nepal was. So the first two, like you said, were upsetting. The first yeah. two maps were upsetting. Nepal was a comedy. Uh, yeah. It was definitely a dark comedy. And I yeah. was laughing the whole time. And then Junker Town's around where I dozed off. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest overslept. with you, right? I turned, uh, I turned it off. <laughs> I didn't want to watch any more of this. It was hurting my feelings. <laughs> and that's why this is a team effort. I stayed awake somehow. Uh, yeah, I dropped. Yeah, right. Hey, th- thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing, nothing exciting happens on Junker Town. Nothing crazy, but Dosen, they're still subbing people. I'm fucking pissed. Excuse my French. I, they sub back in, but yeah. for Heigo Pen. I'm like, hey, why? And this Fury's is a, back in for Wu Hall. Like, yeah. Wh- yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> Figure something out. And this is at a point where a lot of the times you see, oh, hey, the team's up 3 0. You know, we're going to hand them one. Yeah. They don't even hand them this one. Nah. Nah, they run, they run the ball on chain comp and just. Yeah roll it the whole time yep. to full cap defense is just embarrassing and then it, you look at the even when they went to shake hands it was like eh, man i don't know it, you know oh go ahead sorry no i, I was gonna say one you know one takeaway um from this map and something that's kind of been a theme and then we'll hop into news it's been a long one man um is that teams are getting better at killing tires yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like, he, the junk rat days are pretty much over. He's seeing less play, but even the play he is seeing, he's being dealt with better. Um, yeah. That's mainly because yep. you'll see throughout. Just watch a couple games this week. Tires aren't as besides Wakid. Wakid, for some reason, he like he can use tires to kill Fars. He's his tires are probably the best, even though Jake yep. Rat is the yeah thing. definitely high impact. Yep. Yeah, he's a high impact junk rat player. But overall, you're seeing thing you're seeing people manage better, dodging better. And unless you're playing at, you know, like Pine was on Junkrat playing very well. Unless you're playing at a high level, you're not going to have as much success as we've seen in the past in that character. But no, no. that's it. I, I, that, <laughs> I mean, the only stat that I had up for that last game was yeah. closer. Uh, and, and he had a ton of alt percentage. I mean, he had seven alts every uh, 10 minutes on Mercy. But Jesus, it's because his team was taking so much yeah. fucking damage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to find this. What is the silver lining in the clouds? Here? Yeah, I, it was hard. This is supposed to be a banger. Last game of the of the week, like yeah, yeah. But Saturday, yeah, all day Saturday was rough. That was man. supposed to be your your banger game, man. Yeah. Uh, Let's hop into some but, news. Yeah, you want to read off the first uh, couple? Yeah, I mean, so we talked about it. You know, Silk Thread went to Gladiators, uh, yep, yep, formerly yep. on the Valiant. Who that team is, looks completely new now. Also from the Valiant, Custa now moved over to the Fuel. Or, sorry, he moved to the Valiant from the Fuel. Yep. Uh, and he's been streaming more, too, as well, which is good to see him. Uh, I love Custa, he's man. Australian, right? Yep, yeah. Australian. Real high, positive attitude, yeah. man. Yeah. He's a great person. And I think this is a big loss for the Fuel, I think. Yeah. Because uh, he's very vocal, very positive attitude. Uh, I like I like seeing him going to Valiant there, for sure. Yeah. And he's playing a good part uh, in the team as well. Uh, so, Uncle's now where? Where did Uncle go? At, uh, Uncle went to Dallas. Yes, it's, it's pretty much a straight up trade. Oh, there. okay, yeah, um, that's fine. I wasn't huge on Uncle. He is a solid Zenyatta, though. Um, yeah, but yeah. Besides that, uh, let's see what else. T. Who's this? A uh, Tizzy. I've never heard of this person. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Uh, Korean player, uh, it, okay. mainly tank player, signed by London. So okay, we'll see. We'll see where he slotted in. He'll be one of the guys they bring in out of every matchup uh, because they change up players every damn every damn game. <laughs> so. And then Valiant released Envy. So yeah, that's a thing. yeah. I, I don't know where Envy. I don't know where he's been placed, but they just released him from his contract. So yeah, and I heard that it might be a case where he might go to contenders. I don't. I don't know. Oh, that's rough. That's um, rough. But uh, uh, Valiant also uh, Valiant had a big shakeup all week. Grim Grim Reality also transitioning from a DPS uh, role to a coach role. That's, I don't get that. That's weird. Grim Reality is actually insane too. He's a insane player. Uh, not only Overwatch, Fort White, Fortnite. Watch yeah. him play some Fortnite every once in a while. 
really good. Okay. He's young, though. He is young. Super young. He is young. young. Especially for yeah. a coach. Like, I don't... I don't know. Yeah. You want the old dudes in there coaching. <laughs> the, the, the less mechanically skilled. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's more of like life experience versus, you know, usually most like in companies, your executives are older just because yeah. you know, experience and stuff like that. Yeah. But, Absolutely. Um, we, we definitely get into the EQO situation. Uh, we'll keep it simple. Pretty much he was fined uh, and suspended for three games for being racially insensitive on stream. Yep. Uh this has, you know, been a thing of contention, uh, a lot of discussion, especially on the competitive forums where, you know, we talked about uh, player mental state as far as, you know, depression and stuff like that. That's kind of prevalent anxiety and having maybe a psychiatrist or team, something like that. or some all, kind te- of, uh, all the teams need one. Yeah. A lot of people are in that camp. Um, but there's also now the discussion of sensitivity training. Yep. Where most companies have it, you know, how to, you know, there's different, a lot of different races involved, a lot of different people from that, different nationalities. Absolutely. Uh, and not everybody, you know, my view on it is, you know, not everybody's a, I want to say a bad person. It's just some people come from different backgrounds and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with putting a system in place to assist someone with becoming a better version of themselves and a more yeah, presentable absolutely. version of themselves. Absolutely. Um, just because of something they've done in the past or their previous thoughts uh, process. So I, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. It definitely sucks. He's important in his shows um, on the stage with his absence. Um, I hope he learns from this, man. Uh, and I hope yep. it stops. I, hope I it think you will. Yeah. Uh, get into one more thing the Valiant uh, had changed. They signed KSF and Finzi. Mm-hmm. Not sure what these guys are. Uh, their background is, but they they announced they picking up those guys and signed those guys. Um, big change to kind of the end of stage playoffs. I think it's a positive. Oh, this uh, is big. This is sweet, man. Yeah. I like this. Uh, top four teams instead of top three teams go into the playoffs. This feels like a a much more uh, uniform thing uh, that other uh, more like sports teams do. You know yeah. what I mean? More evened out. More bracket. I, 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 yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah, I'll see. It's it. The part I like about it the most is that this shows that Blizzard is a dynamic company. Yeah, and, and they're willing to. You know, we see it on the development end where they they listen to the out, output, they listen to what people are saying, and they make adjustments. And this, yep. as well, yep. has been discussion on the competitive forums for a while. Is should it be a different format? And the fact that they're implementing this immediately is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Instead of it's waiting like another, until next year or something like that. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm glad you brought that up. This isn't something they're changing next season. This is something they're changing now, and which is cool because uh, in a couple seasons, maybe it's top eight teams. You yeah. know, we get enough teams that we see, man, these playoffs are huge. Yeah. They're big. There's a lot of teams. It's a lot of contention. Uh, like we brought up earlier in the cast, this is something that is growing and getting bigger and more popular. Uh, got a good thing going here, and I'm I'm hype for. I'm hype for the future of things because it's it's one of those cases where like I like fantasy a lot, yeah, and I want to start doing fantasy for the league. So yeah, the more teams we get, the better chance of that we have happening. Yeah, uh, and then I can make some more money, so I can buy this these damn uh, I, jerseys. I do love money, <laughs> <laughs> you and everybody else. Well, we're gonna yeah. go with the headliner, uh, the uh, biggest shocker of this week, which I hate. I hate it popped it. up right before we started doing this, yeah. too. It's kind of crazy. Coming at you live. Yeah, no joke. Man, I'll let you, I'll let you say it. Uh, <laughs> I know, that's right. Uh, so, uh, the Overwatch League had been made aware of allegations against Dreamcasper, Jonathan oh, Sanchez from the Boston Uprising. Uh, he has been suspended indefinitely while the league investigates the matter of uh, allegations uh, and binding... <laughs> Involving a minor, we'll get we'll go that far. We're not going to go any further than that. Yeah, uh, so currently it's just allegations at the moment. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to make any speculations on stuff we just don't know anything about. Yeah. Uh, man. So, Overwatch League is a business, and with any business news, you can be they can deal with you when they have anything that shows that you are a liability to the business as a whole. Yep. Absolutely. And even if this is just allegations. You gotta put yourself in a position. Um, yeah, you are the face of a company. Yeah. I, I I hate to uh, just like you were saying. You 
You're a brand. Yeah. Dreamcaster absolutely. is no longer a person. Dreamcaster nope. is a brand. That's how it works. Um, I guess since we are old, Ryan, <laughs> think of things a little bit differently. These are all, you know, 18 to 22-year-old yeah. kids. Yeah. You know, they they probably think about things a little bit different than we are. But we're old, yeah. and we see we see these kind of things. We work for companies. Exactly. <laughs> Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. <laughs> Just lock yourself, lock yourself in the in the building. Don't go outside I, unless you need to go to In and Out. And yeah. you know, follow and the maybe rules. Get it delivered. Maybe get it delivered. Stay in a room. <laughs> this is why Seagull doesn't stream anymore. <laughs> this is. Oh my. Oh man, yeah. It's maybe there'll be this is sports, not this specifically. This is all bad, but it's one of those cases where like the you we're getting. It's almost a sign that this is becoming an actual sport league because this is the kind of stuff that we're gonna see for the rest of time, right? Yeah, people are gonna make mistakes. People are gonna have issues. There's gonna be conflict, and um, they're you know Overwatch, and this is. Once again, another discussion on competitive Overwatch. So, hey, listen, you guys listening, if you're not on the competitive watch, if you're more of a casual player, you know, follow it. Take a look at it. I think they're at like 150 subscribers now, which is awesome. Uh, they have some Ask Me Anythings on there. But there's a lot of good conversations as far as this kind of stuff. And one of yeah. them is, you know, where Blizzard is as far as the rules on off-field behavior. And they're definitely taking the approach of, Let's start with little to no rules, and then as cases come along, then handle them as 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 appropriate, and then use those as catalysts for rules, right? Yeah, absolutely. You shouldn't have to tell somebody, "Hey, don't say that racist word on your stream," even though you're you not would. on stage. Yeah, right. Yep. But it may not be written down in the rule book that says, "Hey, don't be racist on stream." <laughs> now it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But. I feel like that's the proper way to handle it as a new league is start establishing your rules and then see where people fall inside of it and yep. make rules as needed because certain yep. things are just poor behavior. Yeah, absolutely. And and like we had mentioned before, you guys are the face of a company, especially uh, this is, you know, season one. We want to go into stage two or stage two or season two. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, with the idea that this is going to be something that's going to be here for a long time. Uh, uh, guys, don't be fucking idiots. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So, so that's the shit, man. This was a long one. It wasn't. It, I wouldn't say it was the best week. Um, we definitely had a lot to talk about. We're starting off the new stage, so it's natural. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, as far as contacting us, okay. So Gmail, the Bird Watchers Podcast at Gmail dot com. You know, shoot us an email if you got any questions. If you if you want to know what I do on Thursdays after work, I, I, I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> but hit us yeah. up there. Uh, we're on Twitter at at the Bird Watchers. Watchers is spelled W A T C H three R S. Um, you can find us on Facebook, uh, the Board Watchers. Keep an eye out for that. We're gonna be doing some cool stuff there. Um, Reddit as well. Uh, like I said, we're on the competitive um, Reddit constantly uh, at the Bird Watchers podcast. Um, you can find us on YouTube if you have read and you listen to that as your choice for podcast. The Bird Watchers and Instagram, the Bird Watchers podcast, uh, which I got the new password so I can hop on that as well. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're on set. And you're probably listening to us now, but uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, like he had brought up, Stitcher, tell your friends. Yeah. Um, we love uh, we love feedback as well. Uh, like Ryan had said, just uh, just yell at us, man. We love it. Yeah, yeah. We like we like to talk about it. And if you like to hear us ramble, we like to hear us ramble. So yeah. it's working out. But, you know, we took that week off and we talked about it, like how it kind of sucked. Like we didn't really talk to each other about anything that was going on, any news. Yeah. It was kind of a free week, but we were still in kind of that Overwatch mindset. Um, and as we get towards, you know, the end of the season, we'll start talking about some other stuff we haven't stored and planned um, throughout the year. So, yeah, you know, as always, you know, thanks for listening. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll be guys. back. Yeah. <laughs> I have destroyed more of your kind than I can count. Oh.